getting into three-dimensional modeling, if you're building or you're designing and building or you're wanting to build a flight simulator, could be of benefit to you. You actually don't have to shell out any money. There's so many free programs that are around that give you a variety of different functionality, ranging from extremely basic to quite sophisticated, but yet still free. Having a three-dimensional model and being able to visualize that model is absolutely fantastic. I'm so glad that I built my model up from scratch and I still use it to this very day. At the moment, I'm actually looking at upgrading my yoke system. And you would have seen a previous video of mine. I'll leave a link uh, in somewhere in this video or in the description below. But it talks about the things that I needed to do to be able to get that yoke to work. Now, if it wasn't for the 3D model, I probably would have been having half my simulator apart trying to figure out exactly what I needed to do. Benefit of the 3D model, I know exactly what other parts on my simulator need to be amended, what needs to be moved, what needs to be reshaped and that's all thanks to the three-dimensional model. If you do your three-dimensional model dimensionally perfect and I'll take an example of just using the panel itself. If you just take the, the front panel that you are going to do, you'll find that the panel itself can get quite complex. Now to cut that manually uh, will take a fair bit of art. Yes it can be done but it will take a fair bit of patience and, and, uh, and skill to be able to do that. However, with a three-dimensional model, you have the added benefit of being able to export a file that can be used by a CNC machinist and you will get a dimensionally perfect panel based on the model that you have provided. That's what I did for mine and it worked an absolute treat. can't underestimate the benefit of the 3D model, particularly when it comes to error checking. If you've done your model correctly, dimensionally correct, then error checking is fantastic. You will be able to see just how each part fits together and whether there's any clearances or whether there's interference and so on. And when you can rotate your model around and actually see it and understand what's there, you'll be able to see and go, oh, look, there's a bit there that's not quite right or there's a bit over there that's not quite right. And you can make those adjustments accordingly. It's a lot easier uh, to do it in the simulated world than what it would be in the practical world. And then when you do understand what you're looking at in that simulated world, you can then get back out to your real, your real simulator itself, your real build, and know exactly what to expect when you make those changes. But it's not all rosy though when it comes to 3D modeling. There are some drawbacks. The main one is the learning curve. If you've not had any experience before in CAD modeling or anything to do with three-dimensional modeling at all, there can be a relatively steep learning curve. If you're somewhat technically proficient, you can pick it up relatively quickly. And there are a plethora of YouTube uh, videos around or other types of tutorials around. So there's no shortage of information. There is a learning curve attached to it. It won't be like a plug and play uh, type program. You're going to have to learn the basics. But once you understand those basics, you can build upon that knowledge. Uh, but there is a learning curve. It will be time consuming. You're going to spend quite a bit of time getting yourself used to and understanding how the model works, how, how what the different functions do uh, and how you can actually utilize that to the benefit of what you need it for uh, ultimately in the building of your model. Be prepared for a learning curve but be prepared for some time consuming and quite a few hours in learning uh, the desired program of choice but at the end of that hopefully you will have a model that you can be extremely proud of inside of your three-dimensional modeling software but also something that will actually stay with you and modify with you as and when you need it as well. You'll find it extremely beneficial uh, if you take that time up front. Whilst for my model I used Fusion 360 by Autodesk, there are several other free programs that are around. Let's have a look at each one now very briefly and I'll give you my initial thoughts. So 
So the first program I want to show you here is a program called SketchUp. It's a completely free online tool. You can simply type in SketchUp in your search engine and you'll be able to find it. Uh, and it it's extremely basic though. Um, now I'm not familiar with SketchUp. I've never used SketchUp before and I haven't had any time in it. But from the cursory look that I can see as I look at the sorts of things that you can do here and then if I look at the right hand side there of what you can grab in terms of materials and so on and so forth, it appears that it's got some basic functionality. One of the key things that's missing and one of the things that you're going to need uh, when you do your flight simulator modeling you're going to need both import and export functions. Exporting in particular, you're going to want to export parts which we call in STL format, such that a slicing software can take that part and then convert it into a G-code. Now that might sound a little bit complicated, it isn't, but rest assured, uh, any modeling software that you want. From a functionality point of view, it really needs to be able to export to STL. I could be wrong. I don't think SketchUp does that. And even if it did, from what I can see here, the way that this is laid out, it feels like it's a little bit too basic. Now I'll reserve that judgment and please, if there's anyone that disagrees and has done a complete flight simulator in SketchUp, leave your comments down below because I, I do want to reserve my judgment. I haven't spent a lot of time. In fact, at no time in SketchUp at all. At face value, it looks a little bit too basic for what you would otherwise want um, in a flight simulation model. So it's there, it's free, feel free to have a look at it. And I'm sure there's some online tutorials that'll take through the basics of what SketchUp can do. But if it can't export an STL file, or for that matter, a DXF file, I would probably look to discount SketchUp. Now here's another program that I haven't spent a lot of time in because as I said before, all of my models done in Fusion 360, but uh, I have heard some good things about a program called Tinkercad. Now as I've opened up Tinkercad here, and again, it's a completely free program. Face value seems to have relatively uh, straightforward shapes type features on the right hand side there. Uh, I can imagine there would be a, some measuring capability there so that you can sort that out as well. And I'm sure there's some basic drawing tools as well. Certainly in my first impression is a step up from SketchUp. Let's see if it also can export uh, into an STL. I'm sure it, hopefully it can. So it looks like it's got a functionality there as well where it can actually export to STL, which means that should you be able to create your basic shapes and so on for other parts, um, whether you're doing some panel designs or smaller panels and so on, uh, you may be able to use this uh, for, for doing that. Doesn't look like though it can actually export to DXF. And as I've mentioned before, for, that is extremely important if you're intending on having, if you've got a complex shape, particularly a larger panel like your main operational front panel. In my case, you know, and I'll show you it in, uh, in a moment, um, you know, it's quite complex and to cut that with a jigsaw whilst it can be done, uh, you know, is, is going to take a lot of time. If you are able to export into a DXF file, a CNC, a local CNC machinist, they will be able to take that file uh, and they will be able to create uh, uh, your piece in whatever material um, is if you've selected, be that MDF or aluminium, uh, whatever. I'll put a basic shape down here now. I think, I think we'll just use a basic box uh, for the sake of it. Um, and it looks like you can yeah, so you can see you can drag things out here. I'm sure you can double click on that, make that 70, make that 15, uh, and I'm sure I can also pick that. Well, that's just picking it up and down, uh, but also I can probably adjust the height. I'm sure there is a bucket there. I can turn it around. From what I can see off the bat, this isn't a bad, a bad little upgrade. Um, but it, but it might be more so for single parts. Um, you know, just single parts, not not a complete collection of parts all pulled together. I, I would say if you're doing like a one-off or if you want to get a little bit of an introduction, perhaps have a look at um, Tinkercad. It's certainly better than SketchUp. I would discount SketchUp uh, pretty well straight away, not because it's a bad program, but I feel as if this would be better suited. This limitation here is it doesn't appear that it can export to DXF uh, and I think it's uh, somewhat limited in a collection of parts, albeit when you put that together to form components and so on. I don't think it's as user friendly as what some of the other ones are, which I'm about to show you now.
So here's the interface of FreeCAD. Already, it whilst it looks technically over the top, um, and for me, it actually is at this point in time because I've not used FreeCAD, what I can see uh, automatically is a, a whole bunch of functionality. So one of the big benefits of FreeCAD and over both SketchUp and Tinkercad is its import and export functionality. Not only does it have all of the good solid CAD functions from what I can see here now, very similar to what you will get be able to get in Fusion 360, its import and export is fantastic. In fact, the export function of this is even better than Fusion 360 because you can export a DXF file in in this free CAD program, which you cannot do on the free version of Th Fusion 360. You can on a paid version of Fusion 360, but you certainly can't on the uh, on the free one. I'm not going to get into this now, but suffice as to say, from my initial cursory look, as I look over this and I look over the various drop-down menus that are coming up, I appreciate you probably won't be able to see those. This program's got a lot of uh, potential from what I can see. And I'm going to spend some time with this particular program and probably come back in a separate video with my thoughts uh, and feedback as this compared to Fusion 360. I really feel, just at an initial look, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised by what this program can offer. I'm sure there's a plethora of YouTube videos and other tutorial videos around that are talking about what FreeCAD can and cannot do, uh, and I'd encourage you to go and have a look at that. I'm certainly, it sparked my interest, and I'm certainly going to go and have a look to see what FreeCAD can offer. So before you jump in and choose between the ones that we've already explained, free FreeCAD is seems like it could have some great potential here, uh, given the reasons that I've just outlined. So let's park that one. I'm going to come back to FreeCAD in a separate video once I've had some time to to have a look at it. So last but not least, here is Fusion 360. It's a free program if you are a hobbyist. You have to renew that free license every year, which um, takes a few minutes, but it's pretty good. As you can see here, my entire simulator has been modeled in Fusion 360. And there's a fair bit of complexity to this um, if I was to break it down for you. I have shown this on some other separate videos, so please feel free to check that out. But it is uh, fully, fully modeled. Every single panel uh, is all in there. Um, the structure, um, the center console, the seats, the, the cameras, the TVs, the back, everything's all in there. And I still use, use this today um, in order to uh, make my modifications. In fact, I made a modification uh, right now which I've spoken about recently and that is the introduction of a force feedback yoke system which has meant that I've had to modify some of the framing and so on. Having this model has saved me and uh, both I think both in terms of time because I now understand what I need to do to modify on the actual physical uh, simulator upstairs but also uh, just ensuring that when I do get that uh, new uh, item uh, that it's going to work because the last thing you want to do is go and buy something substantial and it actually doesn't work. Having a three-dimensional model you can run all of those checks first uh, to make sure it's going to work and go from there. Fusion 360 is uh, if I was to do my model again or if I was to start from scratch again I would certainly be using Fusion 360. As I mentioned just a minute ago, I would also reserve my rights to have a think about this other program called FreeCAD. I'm going to go and check out FreeCAD because if I feel that that's actually a easier program to learn in the learning curve sense than what Fusion is, and if you haven't started your simulation 3D modeling journey yet, perhaps have a wait until I get back to you in relation to what I think about uh, the use of FreeCAD. Obviously, uh, my learning and my experience is with Fusion 360, uh, and I'm no Fusion 360 expert, uh, but I'm certainly a lot further up the curve with this one than what I am with Fusion with, uh, FreeCAD. I will go and have a look at FreeCAD. I will look at a few tutorials as well and I'll get back to you with my thoughts on that. 
I hope you enjoyed that video. We've outlined the benefits of getting into 3D modeling, some of the drawbacks, and I guess the four primary programs that I have seen that uh, range from very, very basic up to the more advanced. Now, there are obviously other programs, some of which you would need to be paying for, but if you want free software, they're probably the four. If there are others, please leave your comments below so that others can read through those comments and anything other questions that you may have as well, and I'm more than happy to answer them. I'm going to have a look at this... Uh, uh, free CAD program and I'll come back to you on that in a separate video. If you got any benefit out of this please do me that favour and leave that like button and I look forward to catching up with you on the next one. Bye for now. So here's the interface of fu fusion. <laughs>